good afternoon and welcome to the second master class on fno for investors uh, in the first master class uh, master class for investors we talked about the benefits of hedging to investors in this class we will talk about how investors can go long with lower outgo and earn income on the core holdings by using fno now so there are two things which we are going to talk today as we discussed earlier now go long with lower outgo now what does it mean now uh, the first is uh, you have you can go long with a naked a naked long this, this is not a hedge long this is naked long basically you will uh, participate the full upside and downside by going the long so that is why it is called naked long uh, where is a hedge long is called uh, where you hedge your long so that your uh, overall profit and loss both may be limited but here it is naked so you will participate fully on the upside as well as the downside now naked long uh, dated futures and options now this is what you will use uh, to go long with lower outgoes now in case you are bullish on a particular stock but don't want to full, put full money into it uh, then you have three options one is you can buy the stock futures now this involves buying the stock futures and paying the margins uh, margins are of two types initial and mark to market now this can be bought for the farthest month uh, where liquidity is available now typically in india uh, liquidity in the future segment is available in three months which is the current month the next and the far month uh, liquidity beyond that is uh, very very uh, thin so you will typically have to either buy the current month's future or the next month's future. Even a third month future at times is quite illiquid. Now, if you want to carry over your positions beyond three months, then you will have to roll over your positions uh, from the second or third month, which you, whichever uh, futures you have bought. Uh, meaning thereby that uh, when the expiration of the second or third month is near, you will sell off the current position and at the same time buy as uh, two or three months hence the futures uh, this will involve paying some basis or some uh, basis uh, for uh, uh, using the facility of futures so this is the cost the basis which you pay there is always a difference between the spot price and the futures price so, uh, and typically it is in the positive so that that takes into account the interest cost uh, which uh, uh, is normally uh, spent or uh, saved by using the future uh, futures uh, way now by this way you you are you are able to benefit out of the rise in stock uh, price uh, to the hundred percent by uh, by investing just 30 to 40 percent of margins now margins typically stock mar stock futures margins are low between 25 to 40 percent so you just invest 25 to 40 percent uh, and participate fully in the upside that is how you can uh, part, uh, partake or participate in the full upside of uh, a particular stock which you like and where you don't want to put full money however at the same time uh, you it, it entails payment of initial margin which is covered in your 25 to 40 percent you also have to pay or receive daily mark to market payments uh, there are rollover costs basically if you want to carry over your positions beyond the first uh, trade so beyond two or three months then you have to pay rollover cost that is the basis cost for rolling over continuously rolling over uh, you also have to account for all these payments and receipts and the tax treatment in this case will be speculation versus capital gains in case you had bought a cash stock so these are the differences uh, between buying a stock and a stock future so that on the one hand there is an advantage of uh, blocking a lower amount of money on the other hand there are some minor hassles which i described also uh, if you buy your stock futures it doesn't mean that you don't uh, you don't have to bear your losses as we discussed it is a naked long so both the upside and the downside are on your account so only when you are reasonably sure about uh, the possibility of an upside you can use this now the second option that we have is buy call options now this involves buying at the money or out little out of the money call options of the maximum duration available 
Uh, now, uh, in the West, uh, there are LEAPs, L-E-A-P-S, which are long-term options. Uh, L-E-A-P-S means long-term equity anticipation securities. Now, here, options with more than nine months uh, until expiration are called LEAPs. However, in India, we don't have uh, liquidity in very out of the uh, beyond the three month uh, uh, period, which we discussed earlier also. Uh, in the West, we have uh, there, there is uh, liquidity available for quite a, for a longer period of time. And that is why leaves comes into the picture. But anyway, uh, in India, we will have to buy uh, options uh, for the maximum period available and wherever there is liquidity. So, uh, for example, if you are uh, bullish on a particular stock ABC, whose current price is 100, uh, and you feel that the price can go up to say 125 in about six months time, then what you can do is uh, uh, you can buy say 100 uh, strike price call option or 105 uh, strike price call option uh, for the second or the third month now, pay the premium which is uh, uh, applicable, uh, carry in, carry it till the expiry, then. Just before the expiry, you can sell this off and buy another option uh, at the relevant price, which is near the relevant price at that point of time uh, by paying the premium and so on and so forth. So by this way, uh, option gives you uh, an option to, uh, call option gives you an option to buy a particular stock uh, at a particular price in a particular time frame. So in case the stock price moves down, then you don't have to uh, take that loss. However, you have to pay the premium. Now, the premium uh, is the composition of uh, time value and the interesting value. This we talked about this in the first masterclass also. However, in case of ex uh, pre uh, options, we will have to uh, keep in mind that as expiration approaches, options lose their money at an uh, uh, lose their value at an accelerating pace because the time value shrinks very fast. So, pick your time frame very carefully. So, you will have to. Uh, decide or you will have to anticipate as to what is the time frame over which you want to hold on to that particular stock. Now, uh, options versus futures, what is the trade-off? Now, in options, you pay the premium, a fixed premium. Uh, you don't have to uh, sort of participate in the loss. Uh, this you have to compare with the uh, basis which you pay in the futures. Uh, and compare the two where in futures you also have to participate in the losses so typically futures will be cheaper but there is also a downside risk involved also uh, in futures you will have to uh, undergo the accounting hassles and uh, receipts and payments of the uh, mtm margins on a day to day basis which is avoided in case you buy an option now the third option which you have is sell put options now, let us uh, suppose that you like a stock very much, say ABC. Now, but you feel that the current price of ABC is a little higher than what you feel is a good entry point. Then what can you do? You can wait for the stock price to come down to that level. Or you can write and say, uh, write or sell a put option. What do we mean by that? Now, let us take an example. Uh, the ABC stock which you like is currently trading at, say, 65 rupees a share. And uh, it is a it's a good it's a reasonably good company. Uh, you like that company in terms of governance, in terms of growth prospects, etc. But there is only a small problem. Uh, in in your view, uh, the fair price of this stock currently is about fifty nine rupees. Current price actually is sixty five. So what do you do? One way is to you have to wait for the stock price to come down to fifty nine. Uh, there there is a chance that it may not come to fifty nine. It may start rising. And the uh, another uh, is that you uh, buy, a, uh, you sell a put option. That is the second option. So now we might consider selling a put option of ABC, which is expiring, uh, maybe uh, two months later, with a strike price of 60, and get one rupee 55 paisa premium. Uh, this is a rough premium which uh, may be quoting uh, in the exchange. So. By doing that, uh, what what happens is our our cost of acquisition in case. Uh, the stock price moves down and the put option is exercised. Our, our uh, entry price becomes 60 minus 1 rupee 55 paisa, that is, which is 58.45. 57.5. So, uh, 
60 minus 1.55 will become 58.45, right? And or what we can do is we can sell a put option of 57 and a half uh, strike price, uh, which may be quoting at 1 rupees 5 paisa. In that case, our uh, entry price in case the stock price moves down will come to 56.50. Now, if the stock price goes below uh, that price, uh, below 60 or below 57 and a half, we will get an opportunity of getting the shares at the lower price than what we would, we would be required to pay at the initial stage. If it does not go down, it uh, doesn't matter. We, we can pocket the premium which uh, we have got on selling of the put option. And we can keep selling the put option month after month uh, uh, till that price comes uh, or till uh, the stock price either moves up or down very dramatically from that price. Like any other investment options, uh, writing puts also carries risks. Investors take the risk of having to buy a stock that may be heading lower than the strike price. Now your strike price may be 57 and a half and the stock price may, uh, you wanted to buy it for say 56 or 57, but the stock price ultimately may go breach that and go down to 50 rupees also. So that is the risk that you are carrying. because uh, by selling a put option, you have committed to buy that stock at that particular price and the stock price may move below that. So that then you will enter into a position which is uh, which is carrying some sort of an unbooked loss. Now, uh, so this is a, a loss, this is a risk which we, it is carried in case of a, a writing a put option. But overall, I think uh, uh, it is a very sensible thing to do. Uh, writing a put option also carries the requirement of paying margins. Uh, so that will have to be kept in mind. You will have to pay margins uh, on writing puts. On buying a put or a call option, you don't have to pay margins because there uh, you don't have to pay anything more uh, in case the price moves up or down. When you write a call or a put option, uh, you have you your losses and your profits are unlimited theoretically now uh, one more option that we have is to to participate in a limited way in in, in the upside is to do a bull spread uh, basically in case you are bullish for a very small percentage on a particular stock then instead of buying a stock or instead of doing those three thing three options which we mentioned before you can do a bull spread now what do you mean by bull spread is you buy a call of a lower strike price. You sell a call of a higher strike price uh, because you are only moderately bullish for a certain period of time. So what happens at expiry of uh, the option? Uh, profit is equal to, is limited to the difference between the two strike price minus the premium cost. So maximum uh, profit occurs when the underlying rises to the level of highest strike price and above. Loss. Losses are limited to the initial net premium that you have paid in establishing the position. So typically, when you buy a, a call option of a lower strike price, uh, it is expensive. When you sell of a higher strike price, it is less expensive. So you have to, at the outset, pay a small difference. So in case of a loss, in case the stock price moves down, then your loss is limited to the difference that you have paid initially. So now. Uh, there again, if you want to consider an example, uh, if a particular stock ABC futures is trading at rupees 500, the lot size is 1000, uh, you are moderately bullish on the stock for a particular period of time, then instead of going long naked uh, in the stock or futures or those uh, two other alternatives which you mentioned, uh, you can create a bull spread a strategy. Now, the, there is a 510 call option and there is a 520 call option which is traded on the exchanges. So you buy 510 call option, say at 10 rupee premium, and you sell 520 rupees premium at uh, option at uh, 7 rupees. So your net premium outflow is 3 rupees. So at maximum loss is 3 into 1000, which is 3000 rupees. And maximum profit would be 7000, which is uh, the difference between 520 and 510, uh, which is 10, and minus 3 rupees, uh, which is the net premium payout. So 7 rupees into 1000 is 7000 so 7000 rupees maximum profit 3000 rupees is the maximum loss so this is a strategy which you can use uh, where you when you are uh, moderately bullish on a particular stock here the you are also uh, protecting your downside plus you are participating a little bit on the uh, anticipated upside
now uh, going to the next uh, topic of earning income on stock holdings now uh, there are a lot of people who just uh, buy and hold and sit on the stocks for uh, months years together without doing anything so there is a way in which you can earn money uh, by using them in the econo market uh, the first uh, way is covered call writing now this is a very popular strategy because it generates income and reduces risk of uh, being long stock alone so what uh, the trade off is that you must be willing to sell your shares at a particular price which is the short strike price now uh, this strategy uh, is referred to as covered call because in the event that the stock rockets higher in the price your short call is covered by the long stock position so on the one hand you are invested in this stock either you buy a stock or you already have a stock uh, which is valued at say uh, 500 rupees uh you sell a call option of the same uh, stock of 550 rupees or 600 rupees depending on the volatility that you normally witness on the stock take uh, earn premium of between rupees 20 to 40 uh depending on the strike price which you are using so uh shorting your on the sh shorting of the options you are covered in case the price continues to rise because you already have the stock in your uh, in your hand uh so typically uh, this means that you are earning on on the stock which you don't intend to sell in the near term but at the same time in case the stock price rises very fast you will have to forego the stock so that is the downside of a covered call option but that may happen after you have done this uh, multiple times so that is the upside of this strategy and if you are unlucky it may happen in the first or second instance Uh, even then you have the option of buying back the stock at a higher price so uh now uh generating income uh, on a regular basis uh, uh can uh, sort of lead you, lead you to uh, earning about 15 to 20% per annum uh, on the stock uh, which you is which li is lying idle in your portfolio now on selling a uh, a call option you have to pay margin but the, that margin can be com uh, compensated by uh, placing uh, uh, the collateral that is the underlying stock with the broker uh, so effectively you may not have to pay any margin or very little margin if at all depends on the individual broker's policies so without any investment you will uh, can keep on uh, earning premium on the uh, buy, on the buy options on the call options which you keep doing continuously uh, time after time so this 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 is a nice way of uh, earning money uh, on stocks which you don't intend to sell in a hurry which you intend to keep forever uh, the only downside is that in case the stock price moves earlier and faster than what you have predicted then you may have to sell those uh, that stock uh, in the market uh and maybe later on you will have to recoup that stock either from the market at a higher or the lower price the uh the next way to do it is uh, take advantage of discount in futures now normally futures quote at a premium as we discussed earlier uh, that uh, basically reflects the interest cost uh for the period of the futures now if it is a first one month future then it will reflect one month's interest uh, so normally they quote at a premium but many times futures of a stock quote at a discount to the stock price now there may be several reasons for the futures to quote at a discount now if this discount is not is due to any reason other than the corporate action that is due to dividend or other corporate actions then holders of that stock have an opportunity to the sell the stocks that they have now for example abc stock is quoting at 100 rupees and abc futures is quoting at 80 rupees for whatever reason or 90 rupees now uh, what you can do is that you sell abc stock in the market you buy abc futures uh, at 90 rupees and pocket the difference of 10 rupees so uh, but for buying the uh, futures you will have to pay the margins initial margin as and the mpm now whatever uh, liquidity you raise uh, by way of selling the stock the difference between the consideration of the stock and the margins you can deploy that in short term instruments and earn interest on that 
Now, however, there is one downside that selling the stock uh, involves paying uh, capital gains tax, and also at times the discount may widen for the time being. Now that 90 rupees may go to 80 rupees or uh, uh, 70 rupees also, and at some at some point, whenever uh, typically when you do this transaction, you uh, want to square up or reverse the transaction when uh, the futures start quoting at a premium, but that may take time. That may take Two, three, four, five months. So you will have to keep rolling over your positions. That is the, the down, one downside. The other downside is that you may have to pay capital gains tax on these uh, cash stock that you have uh, sort of sold in the market. So these are the two downsides. But overall, uh, I think there are a lot of ways in which FNO uh, can be used by investors uh, either to create long positions or to earn income. Uh, so think over this. Uh, I also uh, told you what are the downsides or what are the risks involved and what are the upsides. So in case those appeal to you in any way, you can uh, uh, try them out, uh, maybe in a few stocks and then take it forward. I hope uh, this uh, was of some benefit to you. Thank you.